We welcome you from around the globe, and thank you for joining us for this outstanding learning experience with Bell and Kellogg and our conversation on driving sustainable commercial change and growth in 2020 and beyond, hosted by the Promotion Optimization Institute and sponsored by Cantar. I'm Michael Cantor, CEO and founder of the Promotion Optimization Institute, and I'm thrilled to welcome all of you here as we are proud, having recently concluded POI's inaugural virtual summit, to consist consistently provide essential information and insights to help you and your companies thrive in the face of unprecedented personal and professional adversity. This includes challenges presented by COVID-19 combined with shifting shopper and consumer habits. Most importantly, we hope you are well. We're passionate about bringing you lessons learned plus best practices to implement and achieve tangible results by improving trade marketing effectiveness, including growth strategies. Before we begin, we have just a few brief items to optimize your experience. This webinar, as with all of our webinars, is meant to be interactive. By now, many of you know the drill, but there are some few there are some folks who are new to this. Please participate in the Q&A session by asking a question now and at any time during the presentation. Simply type your question into the Ask a Question text area below the slide window, then click the Submit button. During the Q&A, we will also provide an opportunity for you to attend one of the upcoming live or virtual POI summits as our guest. The slides will advance automatically throughout the event. You can download a PDF copy of the slides by clicking on the Download Slide button. Please disable your pop-up blockers at this time. If you're experiencing any technical challenges, press your F5 key. I'm thrilled to be joined today by our expert presenters for this webinar, including Fred Harris, Global Director, Trade Strategy, TPM, SNOP, Multinational Project Management at Bell. Fred is the business process owner of Excel at Bell and is on the global commercial team based in Paris. As a business process owner, Fred's primary focus on global digital transformation, his multinational project deployment, change management, and accelerating revenue is producing phenomenal results for his team and organization. We're also joined by Adam Holmes, who is the Global Pre-Sales Director at Cantar. His focus is on guiding new and existing customers in Europe, North America, through their TPX journey. And I'm also proud to have Alexi Janssen joining us. He's the Global Business Partner, IT Business Partner, Revenue Growth Management Tech Lead, and Principal Project Manager, Customer and Trade Planning at Kellogg. Alexi is the his focus is on customer and trade planning. More than that, he gets his team aligned and focused on amazing results across geographies. Before his 13 years with Kellogg, leading in several roles internationally in the TPM space, Alexi worked with Reckitt Benkiza and other CPGs. So join me in welcoming them. Today's session is part of the POI and Cantar Digital Transformation webinar series. We're inviting over the 400 of you registered today to join each in this series to learn from leaders to implement successful digital transformation programs to achieve profitable growth. Look for the additional installments via email, and please register, as we'd love to include you. To set the stage for today's discussion, let's gain some perspective from POI leading research on the state of the industry. In our ongoing conversations with CPG leaders, we speak with retailers as well, POI share group meetings, we find that those consumer goods companies with strong foundational processes and tools in place are managing better through today's unprecedented challenges. We see here at the top of the list is promotional planning, everyday pricing inclusive of revenue growth management. Companies are getting their data in order 
as well as a foundational element. So you'll see how companies are becoming more advanced and aligned around the initiatives that produce results. When evaluating end-to-end -end capabilities, it's critical to prioritize based on your business need, and it is always helpful to understand peer set capabilities and best practices. Those of which we are doing throughout today's discussion and the web POI webinar series. Here at a quick glance, we experience a major trend where POI is advocating that consumer goods companies take a holistic approach to enterprise planning and optimization. Revenue growth management mandates a de-siloed approach where functions and business owners are aligned around one version of the truth. And now, on to the discussion with our expert panel, including Fred and Alexi, to learn from their great experience with process, technology, teams, and results to share with us today. Welcome, Fred. Welcome, Adam. And welcome, Alexi. We have four main discussion themes for today's dialogue. One, what are the key ingredients in the digital transformation journey and why? Two, how are you driving change and how do you avoid pitfalls? Three, understand the revenue management journey. Four, analysts will sum up the digital transformation journey in a phrase. So we'll bring it all to a head there. Also, on the screen, you will see the framework for the dialogue so you, many of you can follow along with the discussion. So let's get started with our first question. What do you see as the key ingredient in the digital transformation journey and we're after the why? Alexi, then Fred, please start us off. Thank you, Mike. Hello, everyone. So there are a lot of ingredients, I would say, but, but uh, Fred and I are, are, are definitely going to capture a few um, based on, on our experience. And the first one I, I would like to call out, uh, which, which I believe is a key ingredient when you deploy a TPM solution in your company, is to have a solid project team in place. You need a good mix of experience. You need a one team approach because it's when I'm when I'm thinking about uh, about the project team, it's business people, IT people, and of course the Kantar team, and and you need that one team approach because you're all together on that TPM uh, journey. And and why am I calling this out as a key ingredient? Because I can tell you, deploying a TPM solution, I refer to it as being a very bumpy flight. So it's, it's, it is not easy, it is gonna be tough, and that's why you need a solid project team in place and you need some guarantees from your management that those people can stay in place while uh, you are deploying the TPM solution across the markets. In the case of Kellogg's, we deployed uh, the solution across 12 markets uh, between 2014 and 2018. And uh, we were sitting all together in the Manchester office uh, in one area which uh, obviously uh, improved communication and uh, allowed some pep talk. Uh, and I still see that as a, as a critical ingredient uh, of the, uh, for the success uh, of uh, our journey. A second one I would call out is a good understanding of what I call the as is. We went through um, a good to be process design, which definitely supported the tool design. So that's a good thing. But looking back in some areas of the trade process, we underestimated the starting point for some markets. And it's only if you understand the starting point 
the as is, how they are currently managing their trades, that you can understand the gap in ways of working. And why is this important? Because deploying a TPM solution with sales, you only have a, a very limited window where you can do it. Salespeople have a very strict calendar to respect. And so you need to be able to deploy the solution in that period of time. And for this, uh, you need a good understanding of, of the as is and, and, and know exactly the change you're going to uh, have to uh, address. And that change can be different depending on the module you train, depending on the market you train. Anything from your side, Fred? Yes, uh, thanks, Lexi. Um, I'd like to really, uh, first of all, I completely agree uh, with your points about having a uh, solid project team and um, solid understanding uh, of the process. Um, obviously, uh, despite the fact I live in Paris, uh, I am an American, so uh, one of the reasons I moved here was to ensure that we had a, a strong project team in place and consistent players and strong players to maintain the continuity uh, of the project. Um, at Bell, uh, we're still in the process of deployment of our TPM solution. Uh, we have seven uh, live business units in um, North America and Europe. Um, so really having a strong, uh, not only internal team, but cross-functional partners with Kantar is certainly a cornerstone of success. Uh, one thing that I'd like to add specifically that I, I see as a key ingredient is really ensuring that uh, you have a solid understanding uh, of, of the processes of all of the, the businesses uh, or the business units that you're about to deploy uh, on a, a TPM solution. For example, ensuring that uh, all of your budget planning cycles are uh, in sync globally and really making sure that you have a strong process-oriented foundation uh, to make sure that the inputs to the TPM uh, are aligned uh, from a uh, from a total global standpoint, so I really see that as a key piece, and that uh, is to your point earlier, Alexi, having a strong understanding of the as is process and making the necessary to be process change prior to undertaking a major digital transformation is key to to being successful. Um, I don't know. Did you have anything uh, additional to add, Alexi, to that? Um. The other, the other experience uh, for me is is um, is make sure uh, your digital transformation is 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 driven by the top. So I mean, for me, TPM is is a is is a top down uh, journey uh, that allows early engagement of uh, other uh, company uh, stakeholders. Again, when you deploy a TPM solution, there are other changes happening happening um, during that time frame in the company, and, and you need to make sure that um, people are aware of, of what's happening in the TPM environment, and, and you do not have any any conflicts. But but the early engagement I also see as critical, because what we discovered is is that suddenly we had some stakeholders we didn't necessarily engage from the start, which got interested in what we were doing and who came up with some additional uh, asks. So I think that's where if you, if you, have, a, if you have a top-down approach, uh, you know it's, it's, it's a priority for the company and, and you, you, you're sure uh, it's getting uh, the attention from, from the full uh, leadership. When I'm talking about leadership, I mean, I, I also would, would see uh, an, uh, a good stakeholder mapping as a key ingredient of success. Um, you, you, I mean, when you run a brainstorm session on who your key stakeholders are and and who has power, who has interest in in the TPM solution you are deploying, you would be surprised by the names that are coming up. And, and I think it's it's important and it's a it's a key ingredient of success to follow up on 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 the names that you that you are calling out just to make sure that you you're communicating with these people on a regular basis because some people may have a lot of power 
less interest, but you need to have them on your side uh, all the time uh, on, 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 on the TPM uh, journey. So I, 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 would, I would call that out too. But again, as, as, as Fred said, uh, it's people process technology and, and you, you easily pay a lot of attention on, on technology why uh, it's people and process which will be uh, the key ingredient of, of your digital transformation. But that sums it up for me, I would say. Very good. <clears throat> so we are at POI and around the globe with our community, a continuous improvement as well as innovation community. So when we look at the aspect of learning and improving, learning from others' success as well as their missteps creates a faster path to success. Can you describe how are you driving change and avoiding pitfalls throughout the journey? Fred, your take on this? Sure. Um, thanks, Mike. Uh, as I alluded to uh, a moment ago, uh, really at Bell, um, our current uh, TPM implementation was the result of a, a failed TPM implementation before. And uh, that one of the major pitfalls that uh, we we learned between uh, from the failure of uh, the previous implementation, it's like I had mentioned before, is we really need to have a strong understanding of the uh, as is and to be process, like both Leslie and I have mentioned several times, and really uh, stepping back and spending the proper amount of time uh, and resources, both people and financial resources, to really ensure that we understood how our business was working and what we wanted our future path to look like towards revenue growth management and ensuring that we had, like I said before, a very solid foundation uh, to build upon. So that was say, hey, saying, hey, we need to take a, a step back here, pause, uh, spend the time and resources in order to really make sure that we understand the capabilities of our, our different business units that are in scope for this transformation. What is it going to take for them to be successful? Uh, who needs to be involved? Who are the stakeholders? And what do we really need to do to, make, to ensure that they're prepared from a basic process standpoint before we layer the technology on top? So I would say a, a real key learning is uh, having a, a strong foundation and being transparent with the, the business leaders in your organization that, um, you know, this sort of major digital transformation takes time and you have to spend uh, the requisite amount of time uh, to make sure that you can be successful in the future, uh, you know, and maintain the expectations around the fact that uh, major change management or major trans transformation is not an overnight process and needs time. Uh, and a lot of uh, stakeholder participation in order to be successful because the technology won't work if you don't have the, the proper process in place. I don't know, let's see, what are your, what are your thoughts? No, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more, um, Fred, and, and I would add as a, as a foundation uh, uh, your master data. Um, data can be a killer in an organization and at Kellogg, when we started our TPM journey, we addressed our customer master data. We did not address our uh, product uh, master data, which looking back, I believe was a mistake. Uh, so as I said, we, we, we changed our customer hierarchy in SAP and, and we moved from a, from a three to a nine level customer hierarchy and, and that was a good thing, uh, allowed us to clean uh, our customer hierarchy and have a fresh start. But on, on product hierarchy, um, when, you, when your TPM system goes live, product inaccuracies are coming up. And you know what? People will blame TPM, while at the end of the day it has nothing to do with TPM. So if I'm, if I'm, if I'm looking back, I would have rather spent more time on building the foundation and making sure you have an accurate data assessment around granularity and quality. And I'm really glad to see Kantar is calling it out into their, into their process. Because 
we spend a lot of time designing reports, um, which is the output of your solution. And and I'm still I still believe I still believe we we have built some some really nice strong reports, but but looking back I should have or we should have spent uh, more time in 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 making sure our our data uh, granularity was 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 accurate uh, and and have a good understanding uh, at that uh, at that level. A second pet, uh, a second pitfall I would I would call out is watch out for over designing the solution leaders leaders were some were, were telling me like hey you come up with a ferrari and we never asked you for a ferrari you should have you should have come up with a bmw and 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 i agree with you i i agree with that because i mean in some instances we have too many whistles and bells that are not used by many salespeople. so you need really to have your basics right first before you add a lot of whistles and bells i can give you some further uh, examples i mean you can build you can build in alerts you can build in a lot of statuses in your uh, tpm process but but watch out for that i'm calling it over design uh, and and over create creativity but with the past pandemic, I believe we realized that you need to have a TPM solution which is agile, which allows your team to go in and change your plans uh, very fast, uh, very quick. And, and so if you over-design, if you, if you generate too many alerts and, and, and statuses that block your system, you will, you will take away that, that agility. Uh, so so over-design is, is definitely another, uh, another pitfall that I, I would call out. What would you add, uh, Fred? Yeah, no, I uh, certainly agree uh, with all of those points. Uh, master data is key, uh, no question, because uh, as the uh, old adage goes, garbage in, garbage out. So you want to make sure you've got a solid foundation. Uh, and specifically on the other two points, uh, let's see, on reporting, uh, I could not agree with you more. Um, I had uh, the benefit of having uh, some uh, advice from one of my colleagues who had uh, experience implementing solutions like this early on in the process. And that person <laughs> advised me to uh, ensure that we didn't develop any new reporting until after uh, the business unit utilizing it was live for at least a year to make sure uh, what they said they needed for reporting uh, during the design phase was actually their need after understanding how the tool worked and working with it for a while. And the majority of those uh, requests completely disappeared uh, at, the, at the end of the, uh, the sort of one year freeze period on developing new reporting. So I 100% agree with you. Um, and then on the, on the point about over-engineering the solution, I mean, this has uh, Im impacted uh, Bell uh, in some ways by uh, over-engineering some solutions that in the end, uh, you really, really need to ask yourself uh, and have the support of your uh, steering committee uh, on some of the requests from the business units that they see as critical. You know, is the pearl uh, truly worth the dive, so to speak? Are you going to introduce so much complexity to, sell, to, to create a solution for a really, really small portion of your business when uh, potentially some sort of Pareto logic is, is completely acceptable and not going to really drive any differential results than an absolutely super complex uh, customization that's going to uh, not only impact the cost of the project likely, but uh, be a real uh, pain uh, in the future to manage and ensure uh, it's maintained and uh, it's easily subject to being broken. So uh, I completely agree with your, with your thoughts, Alexi. Yeah, I think I, I think also. Um, I mean, customizations. Um, we we have had some some tough experience with 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 the change requests coming in, and um, allow me allow me to say, customizations is a dirty word. Um, we said we said yes to too easily on on country market and and department requests some requests came late in the game some requests 
because people didn't want to change their ways of working. So uh, a good learning is is having a solid uh, change control board uh, so that you you really map them out and and don't say uh, yes uh, too easily as you say, Fred, and 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 have a have a steering uh, you can refer to uh, before uh, before you go after those those changes because looking back. I underestimated the impact of uh, some of these CRs on, on the project team, on your project plan, because you can think like, hey, this is a new ask. Uh, I will have Kantar um, uh, coming up with that solution. But, but the reality is you need, your, you need to pull some of your project team into designing the, the, the CR, uh, into testing the CR, into deploying the mm-hmm. CR while at the end of the day, I mean, your project teams should support the change, should, should support the process change rather than uh, spending time uh, on, on, a, on a CR. So, I mean, it's the art of saying no. And the other, the other piece around customization um, is, is a big, big watch out regarding the risk you run uh, when you want to upgrade. Um, if, I'm, if I'm looking into, into how technology is moving fast, on, on a TPM journey, you just need to make sure you, are, you can take benefit every single year on some uh, new technology involvement. And, and that needs to happen in the background uh, and, 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 and really improving uh, the user experience. Uh, while if, if, if you have too many customizations, you're going to struggle with upgrading uh, you, you, your system. Another pitfall that, that uh, I would like to call out is, is do not underestimate um, the capabilities as you are driving change. Uh, TPM is, is, is really bringing this forward-looking data to life but forward looking uh, at, at the lowest level, right? We're not talking GSV or volume, we're talking net sales value, uh, forward looking net sales value. We all know our daily flashes and, and that's GSV or, or, or volume, but, but NSV or, or net sales value can make people nervous, right? It's, it, it, you, 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 the watch out is like you, you, you generate a system like Big Brother is watching you, which is not correct. At the end of the day, you want to help your, your sales teams in driving profitable, uh, profitable growth. And, and you want to, you want to talk, uh, forward looking numbers, um, as much as you can. But, but you, need, you need the capabilities uh, to do so, and, and, and so you need to help uh, your, um, your sales teams in, in getting those uh, capabilities. That sums it up for me. Anything to add, Fred? Uh, you know, I, I agree, Alexi. One thing I wanted to add, too, uh, you know, <clears throat> just seeing as talking about uh, customization and uh, how to handle change requests is a, a bit of a topic for pitfalls. One thing that we've done at Bell, and I'd be interested in hearing your experience at uh, Kellogg, is we, uh, for this project specifically, and most of our large projects at Bell, um, we are uh, have implemented what we call a change advisory board, uh, which is a monthly meeting with all of the global stakeholders for our project. So all of the business unit partners within the business units where uh, Excel is uh, deployed, as well as our corporate team. So myself, uh, corporate IT and, and other corporate leaders, including uh, the process owners who sit on the cross-functional uh, team. So as an example, at Bell, we're integrated with uh, JDA for demand planning and SAP for order to cash. So we all get together and have a, a, a pretty large meeting once a month. We, we review uh, all of the change requests in queue, try to understand how they rank globally, how impactful they would be. So business unit A, brings a change request uh, to the uh, table. Is that a benefit for business unit B, C, and D, or is it isolated? Or really, uh, how do we prioritize these globally and ensure that we're making uh, an, uh, an evolution of the tool and not uh, you know, cutting off our nose to spite our face, as an example, because business units, it's a clear uh, example that you brought up earlier where it's really a process issue that needs to change uh, internally versus trying to wrap technology around a process issue. So that's the only other thing I'd like to add that helps potentially 
from my perspective, mitigate one of those major pitfalls I mentioned and you mentioned with uh, change requests and evolution of the business? No, I couldn't. Uh, I, I I couldn't agree more. I think it comes back to to have have that good understanding of the as is, and 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 make sure you you are challenging uh, them on hey you can change your process. Some sometimes it is uh, it is retailer driven, but um, you can talk to your retailer, um, and 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 so I I think having having that that change board makes makes a lot of sense uh, because it, it it also allows you to prioritize uh, the changes you're gonna bring, and and if you give visibility to to uh, to your markets on hey I did capture your change request it has been approved but look look at the prioritization we have and you will need to be patient because I cannot deploy this solution now but but we are going to look into mm -hmm. that that visibility I believe is critical yeah agreed fantastic fantastic so great dialogue and. I, I know that uh, several of our uh, delegates had uh, asked questions coming in. If we'd cover points like that, spot on and appreciated. So we, we're, we're evolving as an industry. You're evolving as organizations. And what we're finding is we're moving well beyond TPM, well beyond focusing on silos or sales, marketing, finance, IT, supply chain. Uh, and really moving the discipline forward to an integrated approach that's across the enterprise. So if you would, each of you, in your own way, your own organization, please describe the revenue growth management journey. And, and it's from your perspective. And Alexi, if you could go ahead and kick us off with this. Yeah, and I will I will really relate it to, to TPM. So... RGM for me is about connectivity of data sets. It's, it's big data analytics. It's, it's driving better decision making and uh, evaluation. So when I'm, when I'm looking at, at the RGM journey, it's, it's, it's in my role, it's really like how can we leverage technology to unlock data insights? And let me be a bit more precise. How can we leverage TPM technology to unlock TPM data insights? Because the TPM data is, is one source, but it's a critical source. As I just said, it's, it's forward looking. So you want to get insights before the money is spent. Um, but how can you get accurate TPM data without impacting the key accounts workload? Very often, the pushback we got when we, were, when we were deploying the solution at Kellogg's was like, hey, our key accounts are spending too much time in the system. This is not working for us. So I think it's, it's really a, an exercise you need to make around, hey, what is the granularity of data you, you, you want to get out of TPM? And how can you come to a win-win solutions and help your account managers in getting to that data? So user experience is going to be key. Bringing in AI to support your key accounts on volume planning. We're actually now looking into bringing in AI or machine learning in looking into your data accuracy. You also need to be realistic in what you're asking the key account to key in. Because when we were looking at the number of trade buckets across, across Kellogg's Europe, I think we had like 300. Of course, all very retailer driven, but how many buckets, how, how detailed do you want them to enter their promotional or contractual spend? How detailed do you want that P&L to be? Just be realistic, right? Because the more detailed you are going to be, the more work this is going to generate for, for, a, for a key account. And, and, and you really need to, to, to watch out for that. Uh, simplicity drives value, I always say. And you need to make sure data is meaningful. And the other, the other piece that you, you, you want to get to is, is having causal factors on your promotions entered. 
which which is another uh, another field they need to key in. Um, what I what I discovered again is is that um, as they were using Excel sheets uh, at Kellogg, I mean we never measured their time spent on Excel, right? Uh, but I can guarantee you they will measure their time uh, when, or they will call out uh, spending a lot of time uh, when they when they need to uh, complete uh, TPM or, 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 or capture their promotions in TPM. And it's good that that current new solutions really monitor who is in the system, how much time they are in the system, so you can really have an understanding and it, it can be it can be very different by market um and it's 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 good to know that up front but but for me the message is hey rgm it's it's about granularity of data and tpm data is critical and how can you how can you help your key account in in the workload and making sure that they are uh taking this accountability to enter accurate data in tpm would you agree, Fred? Uh, yes, I you know I really would completely agree. Um, you know, as I, uh, I alluded to before, it's really about uh, providing a, a tool on the RGM journey that is adding value to the life of the CAM versus having them input uh, data that's just going to be used for the supply chain team or or the finance team. So really making sure that there's an inherent value. Uh, for the CAM uh, to engage with this tool, uh, it, it, you know, is very key. Um, I agree with you. Uh, from a Bell perspective, specifically, um, uh, the sort of path to our RGM journey, uh, really, um, you know, the deployment of Excel uh, is really the first step for us. Um, it's really part of the uh, or overall process design uh, for Bell to move to uh, really a single figure management uh, system. So in the sense that all of our data is integrated uh, with uh, JDA and SAP. So, uh, you know, myself, I've worked in both the both aisles, both on commercial team and on the supply chain team uh, for different organizations. And I can tell you that uh, we wanted to help to eliminate uh, counterproductive conversations around baseline management. What's my baseline? What's your baseline? What's your incremental? What's my incremental? So really uh, tying uh, all of those foundational things together and making sure that we're, we have the same starting point uh, uh, in our journey to revenue growth management so that as an organization we're, we're unified. Really, also for us uh, at Bell specifically, is we really wanted to uh, have the ability for all of the, the CAMs uh, and other associated functions to have uh, a real deep insight into their customer P&L and their, their product P&Ls to really understand where they can help drive uh, growth from a three net uh, or four net perspective to make sure they can understand well no it's not only the the promo drivers but it's also the contract conditions that I need to be able to try and renegotiate with my customers customers on an annual basis and really also uh, making sure that they're managing their their product assortment tightly and that uh, we're, we're, we're making sure that we're staying uh, square there and really uh, what's most important for us uh, on this value on this uh, growth uh, revenue growth management journey is really having valuable insights from the technology that we're implementing to allow CAMs and allow the business to make informed decisions about what they should be doing or shouldn't be doing next year. So really, uh, from my perspective, Bell is at more of a foundational standpoint, but we're really starting to put strong stepping stones in place to have these sort of key success points to advance our capabilities and really become uh, best in class uh, RGM uh, transformation. So really just making sure once again, a point that I've said a few times is that we have this solid foundation in order to build something uh, great from. Yeah, no, I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't. No, I couldn't. I couldn't uh, uh, agree more. Uh, at the end of the day, your TPM solution uh, has your assortment, has your pricing, has your promotions, and has your trade terms. So you you bring all of it together, uh, and 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 you're making the the data uh, meaningful, um, and 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 the win-win is 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 critical because uh, you you cannot. 
you want granular data, but you, the watch out is like how much time uh, is the account manager going to spend in, in capturing that granularity that you, you're asking for. So uh, that's that's really the balance uh, exercise uh, that you you need to uh, you need to go through. And and RGM is a mindset, and and that mindset uh, is reflected on on the key account uh, accountability uh, to enter uh, accurate uh, data when uh, when they are. Uh, in TPM, and, and the good thing is that nowadays you you can you can really measure uh, that time, and and as I said, I mean a key account manager, and and I had the chance to be a key account many many years. You have you have a calendar to follow, and and there are months where you're working on your promotional plan, there are months where you're working on your category plan, and and the TPM tool should should allow you to really. Um, provide uh, meaningful data to to the company, uh, both external and, and internal stakeholders. That sums it up for me. Fantastic, fantastic. And what you're going through, this journey, when we're looking at data, trade, analytics, pricing, promotion, categories, revenue growth management. We're dealing with a lot of complexity. But let me ask you for the impossible. Why not? And we'll work it back to reality. If you can, in any way, shape, or form, share with us your digital transformation journey in a phrase. Who'd like, who'd like to jump in on that tough one? I guess I, I can go first. I've given this a lot of thought, uh, actually, <laughs> um, because it's really, it's a really, it's hard to summarize into one phrase, Mike, as you said, uh, to do the uh, impossible. Uh, but what I, what I, how I would say it is, you know, when we're talking about creating business value and innovation and digital transformation. I would say, uh, you know, when your digital transformation is done right, uh, it's like turning a caterpillar into a butterfly. Uh, so you get this beautiful experience and everything is working great. Uh, but when you don't do it right, and I think you ignore some of the uh, major pitfalls that Alexi and I have outlined, uh, I think all you end up with is a pretty uh, fast caterpillar. <laughs> Fantastic. Alexi, it does. Yeah, uh, a, quote, a quote that I, I used regularly when I was uh, talking with, uh, with the markets uh, was the following. You can't do today's job with yesterday methods and be in business tomorrow. Basically, really asking the sales teams across Europe to open themselves for new technology and not stick to their Excel sheets. Uh, because, uh, again, this connectivity of data sets that RGM is requiring is impossible um, from Excel sheets. So I, I really was... I really like this quote because, um, yeah, you, you, you often refer to fantastic Excel sheets that you built yourself, and, and, and I'm sure they were very powerful. But again, if you want to be in business tomorrow, you need to leverage technology. So that would be, that would be my, um, my uh, phrase. Fantastic, fantastic. No, a salient points and, and great insights and experience. Uh, what we want to do here is before we get to the Q&A, you know, digital transformation and heading into, not even heading into, forced jams, thrown into an omni-channel world, I want to get some perspectives as we build on our analytics and optimization theme from, from Adam, who will now share some additional perspectives, and then we'll move on to our delegate Q&A. So, Adam? Yeah, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Um, so first, I want to thank uh, Alex and Fred for the for the conversation. It was uh, it was really great to hear some of those pitfalls and, and watchouts. Um, I think uh, what's really important here is anyone who's been involved in a trade promotion management program or implementation will know. And I, I love the Lexus's phrase of um, this is uh, it can be a bumpy ride. <laughs> I think this is really, really important, and we all know that this is difficult, and it's not easy to uh, to, to get right, especially the first time. 
and a, a fail-safe way of making that making that true is to fall down the trap of thinking that technology is going to save um, save the day and it's going to solve all of those problems. Um, it's really important that we focus on process, people, and data and analytics. Um, technology is the enabler um, to make those things happen. But fundamentally, businesses really need to think about process, people, and data. Make sure this is a to make sure this is a success. When we talk about process, we're really talking about um, as as the guys called out about as is and to be process. So thinking about what works today, what should change, uh, what should be altered to make the business run successfully tomorrow, um, to be able to bring all that to life with the with the data and technology. Um, from a people standpoint, we obviously need to think about change. So change management, people readiness, um, how much time are people going to be spending uh, moving from Excel spreadsheets into a technology platform? And how do you enable them to be doing the right actions within the within the solution? And then data and analytics for me is, is really, really critical. And it's really important to think about the data that you have before you move into a project. So master data, customer, product hierarchies, um, even things like your actual data. So where you have IRI, Nielsen, consumption, shipment data, and making sure that that data is in the right, the right format um, to be able to get the most out of that from an analytic standpoint. And what we're doing um, at Cansar is, is really trying to approach that in a, in a slightly different way. And I think if you look on the right hand part here, where we think about automate and trade promotion management, this part is absolutely crucial, as we know, to be able to make sure that you have a transactional and reporting capabilities to automate your process and to make sure that you can you can function in the right way. But before moving into that, we're really thinking about this data, this concept of a data assessment to really be able to understand the quality of your data and also the granularity of that data to really be able to bring that to life so that when you move through this journey, you can enable those insights, you can enable the analytics tools to be able to, uh, to get the real benefit out of the solution. And by looking at that data assessment, we can support on things like harmonization, which again is also critical to do within your business, to make sure that you have the right data in your, in your tool. Fundamentally, what that data assessment um, should be done is allowing you to really work out what those recommendations or quick wins can be as well. Um, and by doing that work up front, while you're moving through that journey through trade promotion management, you can also start to think um, back to the points we heard earlier on. How do you bring analytics and AI into your solution to be able to enable the process as well? So rather than having your key account managers spending all of their time entering promotions in the solution, it's really important to focus on some of those quick wins. So how do you get real-time insights out of the solution to be able to enable uh, change of strategy, change of performance, change of negotiations with your retailers? But at the same time, using AI capabilities to be able to um, uh, suggest actions for your key account managers so therefore they can spend the right time um, doing the right, the right behavior. And that process can actually happen while you're going through that trade promotion management journey. You don't need to wait for that to finish to be able to enable those quick wins and those quick benefits. And that's fundamentally kind of critical, I think, as you start to think um, through this process. Um, and when we talk about that, why that data assessment is so important and why I love it was called out throughout this um, conversation, is that it can enable you to get those quick wins. And without that data assessment and without that process word up front, you'll end up with reporting. Um, and the reporting that's probably not used in the right way, it's not gonna bring you the right insights, there'll be CRs down the line. But actually by enabling those, uh, that data assessment, you can really understand how to get uh, information like return on investment versus uplift, the ability to see which promotions are really driving value within your business and also start to think about more, more tactical analysis as well. Um, I just wanted to call out two, two case studies here, and it's really about strategic planning and then also um, thinking about tactical planning. Um, and what's really important is, is really considering upfront about causal factors. Um, I think Alexis mentioned it during the session here, but actually enabling you to look at that data early on allows you to actually plan in the right way to set up your solution. 
So thinking about what really drives insights and what really drives ROI. Is it the length of the promotion? Is it a secondary display? Is it a, a shelf price discount? Um, is it uh, different combinations around media campaigns or big events? Um, and actually taking that data and understanding that, you can then visualize that in a meaningful way to allow you to group promotions to understand what's really driving ROI, what's really driving uplift, allow you to very quickly dig into those details to be able to understand um, what you should change and how that strategy should go forward within your business. And finally within here, it's also really important, something new that we're looking at here at Cantar as well is actually a very common use case, which I think uh, we're all very familiar with, is actually the current the current use case from a very tactical standpoint around um, COVID um, and actually thinking about how do you take that data and understand performance for examples like pre and post lockdown. So, for example, which customers are driving change, which customers are driving incremental margin or return on investment, what's changed uh, since last year versus this year to really help businesses um, like Kellogg's and Bell to be able to kind of bring that to life to understand how's that going to change their strategy when they start to think um, about planning going into, uh, going into the next six months or so. Um, and what we're trying to do is bring together all those different elements, so starting with a data assessment to really understand what's there, to be able to drive insights, drive benefits within your business, um, to be able to bring all of that to life. Um, and like I said, final message, and then I'll hand back over to Mike. It's really important here that the technology is just one part of this. But it's really important to focus on process, people, data, and analytics to make sure that you can be as successful as possible during these, what we know are very difficult and tricky implementations. So I'm now going to hand back over to, to Mike uh, to take us through the Q&A. Fantastic. Thank you, Adam. And, and thank you to our panelists. Uh, as we begin with today's Q&A, please, uh, everyone, fill out the feedback form that is on your console. To complete the form, simply press the Submit Answer button at the bottom of the page. And now, on to the question and answer portion of our event, a rapid-fire experience. As a reminder, to participate in the Q&A, some of you have already submitted, just type your question into the Ask a Question text area, then click the Submit button. So the first question uh, comes in, and this is, <clears throat> okay, uh, I 100% agree with process before technology. What one or two processes did you focus on first? Alexi, one process? and. We can take it from there. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, if if I'm if I'm looking back into into the promotional process, um, the way markets are running promotions can be can be very different, and 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 we were kind of discovering it uh, within the as is but but were we discovering it uh, sufficiently uh, but but you have you have re retrospective promotions you have off invoice promotions but if you look into the the retrospective promotions as example what's what's the process how are you throwing up how are you getting invoices from your customers and what's the impact on the technology when you get those uh, those invoices uh because again you you want to come up you you want to you want to drive granularity uh, so you want to have accurate uh, reflection on 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 the cost uh, of of a promotion at SKU level but is 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 the retailer invoicing uh uh, is, is the invoice allowing you to do so? So I would say that that's that's one of the process uh, pieces that that will impact the technology on how you can throw up a, a, ret a retrospective promotion. Uh, that I, I I would definitely call out. Fantastic, fantastic, Fred. This one's uh, this one's for you. Uh, on a global scale, how do you manage synchronizing change management activities processes? between very different business units? Uh, good question. Uh, it's uh, uh, obviously rather complex. You know, you're dealing with uh, not only 
process differences, but uh, many times cultural differences as well. Uh, but for us, uh, what we did is, um, you know, as part of our comprehensive uh, sort of pre-work uh, study process, we uh, spent a lot of un uh, time understanding uh, the sort of different nuances within the, the business units to uh, really know what their as-is process uh, could be. So we could really make sure that when we started to sort of cluster and group like business models together, that we could really start to align the processes and start to shift the conversation about shifting uh, the change management as early as possible, possible to start to prepare the business as a whole, and then to really start to prepare the leaders within the business and have that sort of roll downhill, so to speak, to each of the, the key users within the business of, of the tool or that we're managing the current process. So really, uh, it's about uh, starting to have those conversations early and often and follow through, follow through, follow through, uh, and maintain a uh, really strong relationship, I think, uh, is helpful uh, to helping uh, shepherd these uh, business units through this complex change management process. Outstanding, outstanding. Alexi, uh, you talked about data earlier. A question came in from one of our CPG peers. How much time, if you could just answer uh, briefly, how much time was committed to getting the data cleaned up for your TPM solutions. Um, again, I think I think the customer hierarchy data we addressed uh, from the start. I think it 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 definitely took uh, a number of weeks. Let me call out about four weeks uh, were necessary again to capture the 12 markets and 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 uh, clean up uh, the customer hierarchy and move from a three level to a to an eight level uh, nine level uh, hierarchy. Fantastic, fantastic. <clears throat> um, this one, I think this one goes back to Fred. Um, we did that, yeah. What are some of the challenges you've seen both tactically and strategically during a TPM deployment? Maybe, maybe just name one or two. Okay, uh, tactically uh, speaking, um, really uh, just getting people to stop relying on their Excel sheets to do everything and really start to trust the tool, trust the reporting, and understand that uh, this is a value add to the business. So tactically speaking, that has been difficult to get, uh, especially some of the sort of older school camps, so to speak, to trust the tool and stop spending so much time in uh, Excel. Uh, and strategically speaking, uh, is really being uh, aligned with the stakeholders uh, globally and with your business units and being transparent about issues that you're potentially facing and really um, the time you could potentially need to ensure everything is stabilized properly. Uh, that that uh, transparency and building an honest relationship with your stakeholders is, is really key to being successful as well, that you have the, the trust uh, moving both ways within the organization from a strategic perspective. Outstanding, outstanding. There are so many more questions, and the dedication here and the passion from our delegates, attendees, and of course, this is what we love. Uh, we will follow up with you individually on your Q&A. One of us will get back to you. But what I'd like to do at this point is, on behalf of our presenters, Fred Harris, Global Director, Trade Strategy, TPM, SNOP at Bell, Adam Holmes, Global Process and Pre-Sales Director at Cantar, and Alexi Janssen, Global IT Partner, Business Partner, RGM Tech Lead at Kellogg. I want to thank all of you for attending today's webcast, sharing our passion, sharing our ex drive for excellence, and, <clears throat> and our conversation with Bell and Kellogg on driving sustainable commercial change and growth in 2020 and beyond hosted by the Promotion Optimization Institute and sponsored by Cantar. Shortly after the live event, we will send you an email reminder to access this presentation on demand and share it with your team. We want to thank you for your time, attendance, attention, great questions, and focus. And please stay healthy and safe as we anticipate seeing you virtually and live in Chicago and virtually at the Global POI Virtual Summit. Look for information on that, as well as access on demand these presentations from Campari, Nestle, and POI 
and we wish you the very best, and thank you for, again, joining us today.